Hey there, Arconiacs. Season 2, Episode 4, Gates of Heaven was an amazing follow-up to the stressful first episode. I'm going to cut out the recap and give general thoughts and a little decoding. First, this season started out very, very strong. These first two episodes have been very good in their own right. I'm glad that the second episode was mostly focused on the relationship between Charles and Saz, and we got to see a lot more of Saz from beyond the grave. We learned how close they actually were, even if it was somewhat unbeknownst to Charles, how much Saz loved her craft, and how much she did for Charles inside and outside of their working relationship, and how great of friends they actually were. I, I was happy to meet some of the Westies. I think they all have great personalities. Richard Kind, his personality threw me off so much from what I thought it would be. And the Sauce family, also a very great trio. Um, I have some ideas about the whole Dudnoff room and things like that. We'll get to that a little bit later. Why not? Let's just do some decoding. I feel the biggest revelation is where Saz's body was located. Using the laser pointer, Oliver Mabel figured out that the shot had come from the apartment that we now know is the Dudenoff room. It's thought that maybe Saz is Dudenoff and that was her ham radio. If the Rest Tower residents knew it was Saz who used that room and kept this information from Oliver and Mabel, it could be that they were sworn to secrecy by Saz as she investigated what was going on. And if they were all true fans of the trio, they would help Saz in her investigation by whatever way she asked. I think what they say about Saz after they learn that she is dead will be very telling. I don't think that this is Saz's room. I think that it is just a room that the Westies, especially the Sauce family use, and everyone else on that side. Because it kind of throws me off that the daughter Anna quickly and without thinking referred to the occupant as Dudinov. I think that they know who Saz is, the famous stunt double for Brazos. I think it's more likely impossible that Saz befriended them without them knowing who she was. So whoever's room that is, if there is an actual person there with that name, it doesn't look like anyone actively lives there, but whoever owns that room, that is their name. And I think it's likely the person who died in the cold case. We also have to talk about the elephant in the room, Notorious P.I.G. There was a pig found in the Dudenoff bathtub, and to me it has a clear tie to Inez and her family who had a large cured ham in their shower. They say that the pig in the shower was imported from Portugal. Um, slaughtering of pigs is a significant and cultural event for Portuguese people. I think that the family has this pig and they were raising it to slaughter as a part of this very important cultural thing for Portuguese families. Another thing I think it could kind of mirror how here in America a pig is often symbolized by greed and gluttony or a corrupt person, maybe even a cop. Mabel had just talked about how Oliver talked down about West Tower residents for renting. This is the kind of thing that could cause someone to think of others in a bad light, and maybe the West Tower residents are not as big of fans of the East Tower as they seem. This could also be related to them playing the game Oh Hell, where in it you bid on a number of tricks that you believe you can win. Tricks are things sort of like books in 
the game of spades, there are many games that are similar to Oh Hell, but spades is the one that I know of personally that I've played and am familiar with. It is the same thing as books in spades. They call tricks. But in this game, betting on books is a lot more dangerous when people overbid due to overconfidence or the desire to outperform others. I think it could be a reflection of how individuals or corporations may overestimate their own capabilities or resources in pursuit of more sort of mirroring real world instances of greed because in the game if you overbid or underbid you receive no points you must get it right on the money this is the biggest difference i think and many other variations or many other games the rules of the game also prevents the sum of bids from equaling the number of available tricks and it ensures that someone will always come up short. It kind of highlights the competitive nature of greed where not everyone can win and there are always losers. And I think the tenants who are renting and not even owning their apartments may feel like losers in a way in this type of situation. As earlier in the episode, Mabel lamented that she can't afford an apartment and even though we all know New York City apartments are super expensive, it's a very current and real world issue that many parts of the U.S. and other countries deal with. So I think it may not be necessarily purposeful, but there is some parallel there. Notorious P.I.G. is not a Portuguese pig. The Portuguese pigs are much bigger and have large hanging ears, but I do believe it belongs to the Inez family because of the pig slaughtering tradition, and in it the pig is raised by the family just to be killed, slaughtered, or however you want to say it, in ceremony. More than likely, this is another person's room who just happens to have a ham radio it could belong to the westies in general and they are as a collective into the hobby of shortwave radio this could be how sad says she hears that someone wishes it was charles who died instead of ben in general i'm not sure that that's says a secret apartment but if it is i think talking to ursula would be able to tell you exactly who is the legal person who rents or owns that apartment. Inside Vince Fish's apartment, we see a picture of a large group of people with at least five people in it. From the trailer on the murder board, we see that there is a Westies Besties photo with a person X'd out. I think that this is the picture that this is a reference of when the trio likely charles and his other half gene levy go to the west tower i think they will notice that there is a woman's face x out of the picture and maybe not talk to vince fish about it so we know that there is another person who was a part of this west tower group but something happened and they are no longer friends with them also slightly in the frame inside Vince's room is a KW Electronics 2000B ham radio. There are multiple ham radios in a small area in this apartment complex. Uh, why would Vince be in conversations talking about Charles? Well, it is likely that he's worked with him in the past. He has books and posters about movies and film festivals and what looks to be like at least two or three older cameras. Just before Charles calls the police, he states that a week had passed, and it threw me off, but in episode one, when the trio get the email from Bev, it specifically says that they wanted to fly the tree out for a meeting next week, and the next scene is of them on the Paramount lot. That means a whole week passed without the trio being aware of what happened to Saz. And this makes more sense why Charles 
was so worried about her not returning her calls and maybe why she had so much mail. It just made it all understandable. But it also means that the killer had a week to watch them before they even left for California. The name given to the room on the West Tower is Dudenhoff. I mentioned in a previous video that it could be a German name. Looking further into it, it could be a variation of Dudenhof, which is a German place or surname, with Duden potentially referring to a place or a family, and then Hof meaning court or farm, making it a family farm. That would make it work along the idea that it is the Portuguese family who named this as where they raise their animals and pigs, later to be eaten as custom in Portuguese tradition. I know I'm going back and forth, but the whole one week later thing, I wasn't a big fan of it because not only did the trio for a week not hear the wind going through the hole while they were in his apartment, let alone that scene, but for a whole week, Charles did not know that there was a hole in the window of his apartment. To me, that seems a little unlikely. The show is usually pretty good with things being in the realm of possibility, even if it's a little whimsical, but that kind of took me out. I'm hoping that the weak time jump was necessary and that we go back to something that happened in that week, possibly with the killer. If not, I feel like they could have just gone the same or next day to L.A. I didn't do a second video last week, and I was having issues uploading a video this week. I didn't do one last week because I didn't feel like we had enough info for to do anything worthwhile. But I will not only give my first guess as who the killer is, but as I'm re-recording this right after I'm recording a theory video that I'm hoping to get out later tonight or tomorrow. It will be expanding on an idea from the comments of my episode one review by Jenny B, a longtime subscriber, and I love everything she has to say. Thank you, Jenny, for always being around here. But it's going to be based on that with some other theories meshed in there that I've been cooking up about the cold case. I felt that there wasn't enough info to have anyone as a suspect. But if I did have to pick someone at first, I was thinking Anna Inez's daughter because she was disgusted with her mother, how she was all boned up for Brazos. Um, it was her conversation. It was the conversation about Brazos that made her say she needs to get up and and went to go eat some of that sweet cured ham. So obviously it's something that really annoys her. But I admit, I can't see her being a marksman. But I can see Vince Fish being a marksman and the eye patch is something that a lot of times people, especially at night, will use in order to get better sight with one eye uh, when they're trying to shoot. You even see it um, during the Olympics. They do it during the daytime, but it's more helpful at night to get a uh, clear and better uh, focus on what you're shooting. So I think it could just be an obvious kind of hearing there with the eye patch for shooters to focus one eye on their shot. But for right now, Vince Fish is my biggest guess. After next week's episode and its review and breakdown, I will attempt again, calculatus eliminatus, to figure out who the killer could be by stating who I think it's not. It didn't work out last season, but I think by the third episode, the killer must have been shown within the series season. We will be getting the return of the film counterparts for the trio, the screenwriter, and likely me, Christmas All the Time guy, and some others. We'll also get more information from the official police investigation, which we see happen in the trailer. I'm also interested if some of the others 
on the team for the film, such as Beverly D'Angelo Bernstein, who was the VP of Marketing, will show up next week. There's always been a thing with names on the show, how it alluded to certain things, and the name Bernstein means amber or burnt stone. So that could be something or nothing, but I'll go through everyone's names and everything else with a fine tooth comb with Calculatus Eliminatus as a bonus episode or video next week, I should say. But if you could give this video a like, it helps a lot. I want to give this out there to as many people as possible, and we can make this little family a little merrier. But always, thank you very much for watching. Sorry about the delay. Please let me know your thoughts down below. My name is Dallas. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.